two junk journals in two totally different styles, created simultaneously. Welcome to another episode of this little series here on my channel, in which I want to show you that you can transfer any inspiration that you got from somewhere to your own papercraft project, a junk journal or any other papercraft project in your very own unique style. In today's episode, I want to assemble the signatures for my clean journal and the grungy journal. So we are coming a little bit more closer to the end of making a journal. I'm really excited. Putting together the signatures is one of my absolutely favorite steps in the process of making a journal. So let's do that today. And I also want to try to cover some of your questions about the signatures of a junk journal. Um, there are questions like, how many pages do I have to put into a signature? Or perhaps you are a total beginner and, and you, you say, what is the signature? Uh, why do I need that? And how many signatures can I put into a journal that it looks good in the end? Hi there, this is Luise Heinzel. Thank you very much for joining me today. If this is perhaps your first video of this series or the first video that you're watching here on my channel, then please check out the info box. I have made a playlist with all of the videos that belong to this series. So if you want to make a junk journal and you need something like a guide, a step-by-step -step tutorial, then you can watch the videos in the order that they are in the playlist so that you can follow along step-by-step. -step. Yeah, so today we have something really, really important to do. We have to put together the signatures for our junk journals. As always, you can see the clean journal that I'm creating here on the left side of the f uh, video frame and the grungy journal here on the right. And the first thing that I have realized uh, while you were not here, <laughs> I mean, without the camera, is that with doing some homework and some more embellishments that I have put to my pages, the clean journal got thicker than the crunchy journal. Can you remember that we have talked about um, the the amount of pages that we have in both journals? And some of you have asked um, how many pages are in each of those journals. And I said, that doesn't matter. Do it like you want. But um, we had more pages on the clean side than on the grungy side. And now it's the opposite thing. It's really, really uh, not. Uh, no, that's not correct. Luisa, uh, that is not correct. The pages are the same. I'm so sorry. That's not correct. The, the, the amount of pages is still the same. I haven't added any pages. But um, the thickness of this and this is now the other way around. Um, this in the beginning was thicker than this. And now, after I have added some embellishments, this is thicker than this. Hopefully that was not too confusing. And why am I telling you that? I'm telling you that because that is normal. Yeah, when you make a junk journal, it's totally normal that it gets thicker. And um, I think it's good because you can see that you have done something. I mean, look at this. This is just amazing. When you look at this, it already looks like, yeah, like it is a journal, but um, it has no cover in that. But you can um, imagine that it is a journal and that you can flip through it and explore something in it. And I think that is really cool. Um, but um, the fact that it gets thicker with the time is also a reason why I like to create my cover in the very end of making a journal. That was also a question, or actually several of you have asked that. Uh, we have no cover yet. And you have asked why. Um, some of you said that it is perhaps helpful to have a cover in the beginning to have an idea about um, how thick the whole journal will be in the end so that you can also perhaps um, start creating uh, the cover and, and decorating it. Um, that can help to get started with the journal. That is of course true when you have your cover and you think okay that is my first thing that i want to do then you have something to do and you can start with your process but when you look at this and you remember how thin this was in the very beginning um you might um see 
relatively fast that it could be a problem to have a cover in the very beginning because you can't know how thick this this will get and for me making the cover in the beginning is like limiting myself because when i find a nice idea during my process of decorating the pages and i can't do that idea or or yeah bring this idea to reality because the pages would be too thick then that is not so good for me. So that's the reason why I have not a cover yet. Yeah, we will make the cover in the next video uh, or in the next step of this process. Um, what have I done without you? So um, in the last video, I have shown you how you can make some embellishments using repetition without having boring embellishments. If you have uh, missed that video, you can also find that in the playlist, of course. And uh, what I have done in the meantime, in the Grunty Journal as well as in the Clean Journal, I have taken uh, some more scraps exactly in the way that I have done it in the last video. And I have made some more embellishments. And I have also put some tags and journaling cards into the pockets that I have here. I have also made some more pockets because I thought uh, some pages are a little bit empty. Here, for example, I have added this really simple triangular tuck spot. Um, and yeah, I have chosen some papers like this, for example, or some tags that match the colors of the journal. And I have just put those into the pockets. And as I said, I've made some more embellishments where I thought that they could look um, great. Um, some of you <clears throat> have asked, and that is actually a really good question. It, it, um, was not so in my mind when you, uh, since you have asked that, no, not since. <laughs> that is not a sentence, Louisa. So there is something that I'm doing that I haven't had in mind until you have asked that question. And that question was, what are you doing with the inner parts of those pages? Because you have seen me in the most videos of this series flipping through the pages like this. Yeah, so or perhaps also like this. I've flipped them this way, but that doesn't matter. I have looked to the outer pages of such a folded page. Yeah, so that means when I um, have shown you the pages or when I have created something on the pages, I've done it like this. And I have mainly decorated this side and this side. And I have not paid so much attention to the, the inner sides. Yeah, um, this question was about the embellishments. I'm not talking about the stenciling and stamping that we've done in the very beginning. There I have also opened those pages, but the question was about this here. Yeah, a pocket and something in the pocket or a butterfly somewhere as an embellishment. And that has a reason. Yeah, it's something like um, a guideline for myself doing it exactly like that. Let me try to explain that. When I create a junk journal, I want to have really much space for writing, for creating own things. You know that I, in the most cases, sell my junk journals when they are finished um, and I, th I sell them in my Etsy shop. So that means I want to have space for the new owner um, to be so that the new owner is able to live his or her own creativity yeah for me it's not so nice when everything is completely finished in such a journal when i want to sell it and that's the reason why i have also really like totally empty pages here and with this like method taking this creating something here creating something here leaving this nearly empty I always know that I have enough space for the creativity of the new owner for writing and that stuff. And 
I mean, that was a really good question. And I was like, oh my goodness, why haven't I thought about that? Why haven't I talked about that yet? Um, because that could look a little bit strange. Here, for example, we have something here. When we op open that, we have the digital paper, but here is nothing. No pocket, no embellishment, nothing. And here we have this. Yeah, but that's exactly that. I know when I do it like that, I will have enough space um, that is like empty and free for creativity of someone else. Or if I um, take the journal for myself, it, if it stays here, I know I have enough space for creating things later when the journal is finished. And there's absolutely no reason uh, to leave the pages here like this. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> This is a bad example, and I will tell in a second. I will tell you in a second why this is a little bit uh, not so good for what I want to say. But let's put that aside and let's take another one. So here, for example, we have here. <clears throat> this that is also not a good example. <laughs> Louisa, let me search for a page that is a better example. It's not so easy. It's not so easy when your brain works like my brain is working. I, I had a page where I thought that could be good and now it's gone. I don't know where it is. <laughs> okay, let's take, let's take, for example, this one. This is also not such a good example, but let's take this one. You can see we have something here. We have nothing here and we have a little bit here. And now I can decide, do I want to leave this page like it is so that it opens like this? Or do I want to have the page like this? Yeah. And when I have finished my embellishments and I have put everything to the pages, I will go through the pages. Perhaps I can find a better example and see if I want to leave. Ah, uh, this is this is better. I go through the pages and I um, decide if I want to leave them like they are or if I want to turn them the other way around. Here, for example, we have an embellishment here with this pocket and we also have some journaling uh, space here with these little papers. And on the other side, we have this little pocket here where we can put this uh, paper in. But in the inside, there's nothing. And if I have several pages where this is decorated and this is decorated it would look really strange if i would leave every page like this yeah please imagine every page is the same decoration decoration nothing and you would put that together then um this flow of decoration would be relatively regular in your journal later because you would have something here open that here is nothing. When here um, comes the next page, you would have something here. Flip, nothing. Decoration, flip, nothing, and so on. That would be really regular. Of course, you can do it like that. Junk journaling has no rules. But for me, that is a little bit too boring. And because of that, um, I take those pages when I, I'm in the process of putting the signatures together. So that's what we are going to do today. And I decide if I want to leave it like this or... If I want to flip it around to get a little variation, yeah, I have always the possibility to um, move this around and take it the other way around. Also with colors and with um, the amount of having something on a page that is really helpful to think about that if you want to turn the page like this. For example, if I would take this thing and if I would put it in here. Look, this is totally overloaded in my eyes. I mean, you could do it like this. For this clean journal, it screams not so loud when here's so much. Yeah, it also goes really well together because of this white embossing powder and this white doily here. The fact that this die cut is white, it flows like this. But for me, it's relatively much. Yeah. It could be a possibility and perhaps that could be a little bit more interesting to take this like so and then put this inside here like this so that you have this embellishment here standing for its own here as a eye catcher 
as a highlight for this page and here's nothing. Imagine you would write something here with a black pen. How gorgeous would that look in combination with this here on the left? I hope that makes sense. Also on the other side here, you can see uh, we have this here and here's nothing. This is relatively dark for um, this clean journal. I know that perhaps you want to think about something a little bit darker here as well so that this flow goes over this page. But the amount of embellishments is balanced, I would say, on this double spread here. If we would take it the other way around, you can check that out as well. Ooh, actually, <laughs> this for me is not so extreme like the other example. Because here, this here and this makes something like a connection between the pages. And both of these embellishments are not so bam and not so big, not so um, detailed like this one is here this is relatively whimsical here in the background so that this is yeah this is whimsical as well isn't it so it's a little bit busy i would say and here it's much as well but it is not so loud i don't know if that makes sense so that's the reason why i like to um, first work on the outer pages and then later on i will decide if i want to turn them the other way around so um, I wanted to tell you something else, what I have done without you. And that's um, visible, for example, here. As you can see, I have cut our color palette into pieces and turned that into an embellishment as well. So meaning this here is a part of the original paper that I had used to create the color palette. And I've just taken my paper trimmer for the clean journal and I've cut that relatively straight. For the grungy journal, I've just torn it, but it's the same method. And then I have taken some paper scraps, some of those that I have shown you in the last video. And I've just made this little embellishment here. And I have done that with all of the colors that we had on the color palette. And I really like that my handwriting is here. And that's something really weird. <laughs> Perhaps you want to make a red cross in the calendar because Luisa Heinzel has just said she likes her handwriting. That's not normal, I guess, <laughs> because normally I really hate my handwriting. But in this case, and now I can't find a second example. In this case, I don't know why, but I like it. I am, I think it's because I can now see with those uh, embellishments that are made out of the color palette, um, that I have come forward in my process and that I have made this journal. I mean, this handwriting is something like, yeah, like a signature as well, isn't it? And I thought perhaps it's also interesting for someone else. I mean, if um, the journal is sold and the new owner gets it, then perhaps... Um, it's cool to have this here, yeah? And I'm also assuming that, um, yeah, in the most cases, uh, my customers are also viewers of my channel, yeah? So some of you have bought my journals and you have, in the most cases, you have also followed the series uh, where I have created the journal that you have bought on my channel. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm still searching for for another example of this uh, here from the color palette. I, ca I can't find it. Where is it? I think the butterflies have gone. <laughs> so here we go. So um, I think this is really cute. And another thing that I um, realized here is, um, here, here you can't see it so well because I have put some scraps to that area that I'm talking about because when I made this I haven't uh, realized what you can do with such a piece of the color palette. I, I have to search in the grungy journal for an example because I think there you can see it better. <clears throat> Here we go. <laughs> Sometimes it's it's not so easy. <laughs> so here we go. Um, here you can see what I have done here. And perhaps you can also see the light <clears throat> that 
is coming from behind of the butterfly. Can you see that? Perhaps you remember when we made the color palette, we've just taken the ink pad, um, turned it upside down and then just turned it a little bit around on the paper to get the color from the ink pad to the color palette. I said, and that's still my opinion, that it doesn't have to be nice. We just want to see the color on like a little swatch. And when you now look at this, um, you can see that this white space that we got when we made it like this now is part of this whole arrangement. This looks like there's a hole and the butterfly is coming out of this hole or flying into the hole. That's a question of perspective, of course. But this gives also a little bit of negative space. Do you know what I mean? That makes it more interesting um, than if this whole area was solid and filled with the color. I really, really like this. And here you can see my handwriting as well. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So um, that is what I have done without you. And oh, I wanted to tell you why this is a bad example and why you can't um, flip the page here. I mean, I will use this exactly like it is so that it opens later like this, because <clears throat> here you can see that this paper scrap here, this brown paper with the white uh, writing on top that goes over this fold here yeah one part of the paper is here and the other part is here and when you have a fold here and you have two layers of paper over each other here and you want to flip that to the other side then you would realize that oh my goodness how can i show you that <laughs> i'm so sorry can you see that no you can't see it because my camera is not working ah yeah now it's focused i think can you see this there here's a little hill because the paper doesn't want to go into this fold here um, because i have made it like this put the paper around and then i have sewn it here and that's a normal thing yeah when you have something like that that goes around the corner i can only recommend to not try to um, fold the paper in the other direction especially when you have glued that here. I've only sewn over here with my sewing machine. If I would have glued this here, the problem would be way, way bigger. So please have that in mind when you do the following steps. So now we want to make signatures. So the first thing that I want to tell you is that I already have made signatures for the Grungy Journal. So I will show you my method with the clean journal as an example, but my ideas and my thoughts and my tips and tricks would be, of course, exactly the same with any other journal. Yeah, it's not dependent to the style of the journal, what I'm doing here. So in the end of this video, we will hopefully have something, ooh, something like this here. As you can see, we have those little bundles here. So I'm showing you that here on the grungy journal and no, I will do that for the clean journal in a second. So we will have in the end those little bundles of paper. And each of those bundles is one signature. So for all of you who have asked, I have no idea what a signature is because I have never heard about that. This is one signature. So in the journal later, we will have one, two, three, four, five signatures in total. And each signature has several pages in it. So when I take one, I can flip through it now because they are all put um, into, no, that's not the word, you know, <laughs> they are laying not into each other. I know that is not, not good English, <laughs> but <laughs> you can now flip through them and you can see how the journal will look in this area here later on when everything is finished yeah so we will decide about the order of the pages now as well um there are many of you who are asking and i can totally understand that how many signatures do i have in uh, do i have to put into my journal and how many pages per signature and for me that is always a disaster when i get such a question because i can't answer that because it's depending on 
first, your taste. Second, um, the proportion of your journal. If you have um, like this really loose feelings about a proportion of a journal, then you have a really, really easy life, I would say. I have a very special kind of emotion when I touch a journal and I want to try to explain that. Um, you know, this series goes really into detail and it tries to answer so many of your questions. And one of those is, um, I would like to go into your brain and I would like to look into your brain and, and I would like to be able to think what you think. And this series is made for trying to explain that. So let's see. If I would take this and I would put it to my table like this um, and I will like lightly hold it here. Yeah. Do not press it like this because then you will have not a really good picture of the reality. I'm holding it like this so that it can't fall apart. I'm putting it to my table like this and then I look to it from the top and then I can see how thick this journal is going to become in the end and when I say that I mean um, approximately yeah because this is still not the end result um, but when I have it like this I can get a feeling for how wide the spine later on has to be. Please imagine here is the back cover of the journal and here's the front cover of the journal and here where my hand is now, like this, we will have the spine. And I'm also trying to hold it like this because this way I get a feeling for how thick will the journal be in the end when the cover is around it. And there are some things that I like about proportion and there are some things that I really don't like and that kill my nerves. I will give you some examples before we go on with this so that you can understand that a little bit better. For example, what totally kills my nerves is this journal. <laughs> I have created this a long time ago as a design team project for Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. So everything that you can see here on the cover is from her shop and the most of the things inside as well. But let's talk first about this. If you look at the journal like this, you can see it's a disaster. It's absolutely a disaster. When I created that, it was like this. The pages were empty in the very beginning, of course, and the cover was like this so that this and this was parallel this journal has a relatively thin spine so it happens of course that when you work in the journal that this uh, happens yeah do you know what i mean it's for me it's it's ah. <laughs> Every time I look at it, I'm like, why have I made the spine so small? And why haven't I thought about that I want to put relatively thick embellishments into this journal? Yeah, but I couldn't know that, I think, when I made the journal. Um, and the problem for me is that this is now something like a triangle here and not a rectangle anymore. I like it better when this top view is a rectangle like for example on this journal here it's a little bit uh, difficult to show because of this lace here and this is a soft cover so it it goes something uh, sometimes uh, like this but you can see that it is like more harmonious yeah this is a rectangle and not a triangle if i would put more embellishments into this journal it would perhaps do something like this as well and i know that i don't want that <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> and another thing about this like emotion about a proportion of a journal is how can i explain that when i have a hardcover book like this i have the feeling 
I have a book in my hand. It's, uh, of course, also because we can see a spine here, either the original spine, when we have used a book cover to uh, bring it to new life, if we have an, used an original book cover, then we can see the original spine, or uh, if we have created it by ourselves, we have a hard spine here, yeah? And that makes it like into a book. I have the feeling I have a book in my hand here. Here, um, because this is soft, I can see it is not the same like with this. Yeah, also, do you know th these things here, these um, embossed areas here, the corner here that makes it into a book. Yeah, but this, when I look at it um, on the first glance, it is like a pillow. <laughs> it's not a book, but, and that is for me, not only really important, but also super hard to explain. Even if this doesn't look like a book, it becomes a book when I lift it up and have it in my hand like this. Because here, the spine is hard compared to this fluffy, like, um, pillow-ish material here. That's the first thing that makes it into a book, that this is a real, like, spine. Even if it doesn't look like a spine because of this fabric here, but it feels like a spine. And the fact that it is really like a... Um, rectangle and it feels like a rectangle do you know what i mean when you look from here everything is regular when you look from here everything is regular even if there's laces here i i can't explain that so well i guess but when i have it in my hand i have a rectangle in my hand um and that makes it into a book perhaps um we could talk about this example here. I have taken this book cover here. This is not finished. <laughs> Don't panic. <laughs> it will not stay like it is. But uh, I have tried some things here and um, thought I could turn this into a junk journal as well. So I have taken an old book, created um, this here. <clears throat> and I already have some signatures. And as you can see here, when I hold them like this, it is already a triangle. That is not so good because, you know, I want to have a rectangle for my journal and I don't want to have such an extreme triangle-ish shape. Um, the technique that I have used on the pages here makes it into a triangle because those pages here are really grungy and they need more space here than on on this part of the page because everything is here like waves so that it needs more space here. But when you now take this and you have the cover and you put that in here to check if that's good for you. I mean, um, if you are a beginner, perhaps uh, that's not so in your mind. This um, step is the last step where you can change something, yeah? When you have your signatures and you put them in here and you think, oh, it's too thick. I don't like a page. I want to change the order of my pages. You can do that now. In the next step, we will make the cover and put the p signatures in here and then it's too late. Then they are in here and you have to live with what you have here. So um, that's the reason why I'm spending relatively much time with this step to check what's going on here because look at this when i close the book with my fingers here i have a rectangle this could make me really happy because when i touch it i have a rectangle it looks like a book it feels like a book it is a rectangle everything is nice but when i uh, take my fingers off here you can see that it makes something like this and this means I have to think about taking some pages out to make it thinner or make a closure 
to my journal later when when the signatures are in here so that i'm able to close it so that it holds like this because it's not much pressure that i need to hold this closed yeah um, but those are all the things that you have to be mindful of at in this step and where you perhaps have to think a little bit about the things Mm, junk journaling is about having fun of course yeah we want to have fun we want to play we want to create something we don't want to think about those things but <laughs> my opinion is please think about those things now because later on when your journal is finished you will have way more joy with it than without thinking about those things and later on you think oh no why is my journal doing this and you don't perhaps don't like it yeah so that's the reason why i'm trying to um put the most amount or the most possible amount of thoughts to the table here uh, so that you can perhaps um, transfer that to the reality on your table yeah perhaps you have something like this and you don't know how to handle that so perhaps you got some tips here and another thing is also um, the distance between the signatures. I will show you again this thing here um, that shall become the grungy journal later because here you can see that relatively good. When I put this to the same table in exactly the same way like I've done it before and I just hold it here, yeah, not press it, just hold it that it can't fall apart. Then you can see that here is relatively much space in between of the signatures. Can you see that? If the the embellishments um, were thinner, or if we had only empty pages in the journal, um, it could look like this. You know what I mean? It could um, happen that when you have really thin, thin things on your pages, or you have nothing on your pages, that please ignore this yeah because here it is here <laughs> i can't remove it now but if it wasn't there it would be like this and the distance between the single ends of the signatures here can be different from journal to journal yeah so that means here for example we have a relatively small distance between the single signatures so this is 0 0.5 centimeters really small and when you flip through the journal you nearly can't see that something is here because this is so small but this journal is also uh, relatively thin and i have the problem with the triangle yeah with a thin journal, it can look good, or um, no, with a thin journal, I think it looks better when the distance between the signatures is not too much. Because look here, um, with this half of a centimeter distance here, they are all really like regular. This looks, mm, the distance looks proportional to the width of the spine do you know what i mean here with this purple journal it would be the same if i would take them here it is a little bit hard to show because it looks a little bit weird when they are not in the right place but can you see that it looks relatively um, proportional imagine i would put more than a half centimeter distance between my signatures here then i would have to take one oh i can show you that here that is good i can show you that here let's take one out and let's think okay i can take a whole signature out and then i i wouldn't have this problem that it opens by itself but now <clears throat> let me just try to adjust them a little bit but now look at this then they would be in here nearly like this this looks absolutely strange doesn't it it looks like here's something missing even 
if this would be better for the journal and for closing the journal, for working in the journal, even if it would be better. I think that is strange. <laughs> I mean, it's not a problem when you have such a big distance there. Yeah, the it's not the end of the world. But um, what I'm trying to say is, if, if you want to know what's in my mind, then this is not so nice. If I end up with something like this because I have done the wrong measurements or um, there was no other way to do it, because sometimes um, you have to do it like this because there's no other way, then I can live with it. Yeah, As I said, it's not the end of the world, but I want to try to avoid that. So um, I just want to show you how it would look when you would have... If you would have uh, one centimeter distance between your signatures, I can show you that here so that you get a feeling if you perhaps um, have never done it. So here you can see that is way bigger. And if you want to hear, <laughs> I mean, uh, what is the word? Truth. Uh, if you want to hear the truth, um, in the very beginning of my junk journal journey, uh, I saw, of course, people who have created a junk journal and, and who have um, constructed it exactly like this, with this distance. And when I saw that, the first thing that I thought was, what the heck is that? That looks strange. You come to the, uh, you flip through the pages here like this, you have something that looks like a real book here and here and here and then you come to this area here and you have this this space here that is for me it was like hey what is that and I also made a really big mistake in the very beginning and perhaps uh, that's interesting for you to know about so that you don't make the same mistake I'm just searching for a good example here for example I thought, okay, this is not nice. I want to have the same look like I have here. And then I made the biggest mistake that you, I think, can make. <laughs> I have taken these pages, the last page from this signature, the first page from this signature, and I have glued them together like this. Hoping... When I flip it like this, that I get this here. And when I flip it like this, I get this here. And the sense was to cover this slot here. But please, 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 please don't do that. That's such a big mistake because um, when you have it like this and the pages are attached to each other, they can't move so well. You will always get... Can you hear that you will always get something like this here and you will always get something like this here and that is not good the pages need the space here and because of the space the the movement of the pages is really big for example look here now this page is lining up here and when i flip it it comes out here because it has there's this distance. Do you know what I mean? I mean, be, below this, there's this distance that makes this. And when I flip it, it's lined up here. So please don't glue the pages together. Speaking about the proportion of a journal, I would like to give you my opinion about that. And I don't want to say measurements because I don't like measurements. But <laughs> let, me, let me tell you how I do it normally. When I have a journal that is approximately DNA 5, then I like to have a spine that is approximately 6 centimeters. When you compare this, you can ooh, you can see that, mm, I mean, these pages are DNA 5. I've printed the printable that I've used here to DNA 4 
folded that in half, then I have DNA5. If you print to US letter, then this would be a tiny little bit different, but I guess not too much to follow uh, my thoughts here. Of course, we have also pages that are smaller, like this one here, for example, but the main size of the journal is DNA5 plus the lace and the things that are peeking out here. Or for example, if we have page, whoo, page tabs that are peeking out here, then it's a little bit bigger, but the pages themselves are approximately DNA5. And for this size, I like six centimeters uh, width for the spine. You can see here <clears throat> that the pages are approximately DNA5 as well. The journal looks way bigger than DNA5 because of this wonky, like a little bit irregular kind of cover. And of course, because of all of this lace here that makes it bigger, even if this is like fluffy and you have the feeling that the cover ends here. But this is, of course, part of the cover as well and that is the reason why this spine here is a little bit bigger than six centimeters if you want to know it exactly it's ooh, it's approximately 7.5 centimeters and this when i have it in my hand feels like a propor sorry proportional book when I look here, this is not too small and not too big, and it feels proportional. If this was, for example, only three centimeters, then this here would be way too massive for me. It would make it unproportional. If this was, for example, 12 centimeters or even more, it would feel like I would have a really big thing in my hand that doesn't feel like a book anymore. I don't know if that makes sense. So if you have your loose pages, like we have here with the clean journal, you can do a little trick. You can hold it like this, as I said before, just lightly hold it here. Don't press too much because that would give you not the real um, thickness of this. Just hold it like this and then try to take a ruler I will lay that here to my table next to the journal here like this so that I can manage to hold it here. It's a little bit difficult to show that in the camera. And I will put the zero of my ruler here to the last page. I mean, on the bottom of, uh, of the page, but here. And I will measure from here to here. Um, that's a little bit difficult because I have to press it. Otherwise, it's not the reality. And if I hold this here and hold it like this, then it's approximately 8.5 centimeters. Um, you don't want to press this too much. Otherwise, you would get this triangular shape later uh, that we've talked about before. So that means I want to have a rough measurement of, of this here. Yeah, it's a little bit weird to show, but... I hope you, you got what I mean. So this is approximately eight and a half centimeter. That means this is already a little bit more than I would need, or I think I would need. When I think about six centimeters spine for DNA5, then of course, 8.5 centimeters is two and a half centimeters more than I would need. But that's good to know for me in this step because now I will assemble the signatures and now I have the chance to see if here are pages that I, for example, don't like anymore, where I haven't done anything yet so that I can take them out without having any trouble with taking something out that I probably like or perhaps like. And of course, now we can decide about the order of the pages as well. And I like to make my life really easy by um, putting these pages onto little um, stacks of, of paper so that I can see uh, what I have. Meaning smaller pages, of course, have a totally different look than bigger pages. 
more embellished pages have a different look than less embellished pages. And when I use uh, digital paper, I like to bring that um, like regularly into the journal. So that means <clears throat> I will first take out every page that has my printable on it. As you know, I have used my Steamy Floral Smoke digital paper collection for those uh, both journals. Um, I will link these down below for you so that you can check them out. And I will first take all the pages out that have the printable. Um, you don't have to use a printable for your journals, of course, um, but that this what I'm thinking here and what I'm trying to bring to you of course works with a paper pad for example as well so if you perhaps have paper from a paper pad that has a theme like my printable has here and the pages are cohesive and harmonious and a little bit similar as well perhaps then you could do this trick as well so let me quickly take all of those out. <clears throat> I mean, you don't have to do that. Yeah, you can also uh, just do it like you want it. And there are also some people who like to have um, different like characters of signatures. Um, you could also put all of the same papers. Do you know what I mean? All of the printed paper or all of the paper from the paper pad into one signature that can look really cool as well. But uh, for this, I want to have it a little bit um, I don't know the word. <laughs> you know, so that it is not not every uh, not all of the printables shall be in one signature. So that means we have one Thing here with all of the printed pages then we could go through this and take out all of those really small pages and I'm talking about the pages that are small um, in the width and in the height meaning this is a different page than this this is just slim but it's high but this is short and slim yeah, so we can do that in the same step, I guess. So then you can perhaps understand better what I mean. So let me put this really tiny thing here and the slim page here. And we are going to do that with the others as well. So this, for example, is short and slim. So that goes here. Um, this one as well and this. And this is also, I would say, here, I mean, it's a little bit shorter, it's not so slim, but you know what I mean. It's not so important that that is totally, like, I mean, don't freak your freak with this, yeah? But I want to have an overview of what I have here. So... Um, here, for example, I have something where I have already put two pages together. Because I really like this smaller page here in combination with this. If I have found such a combination where I think I want to leave that, I will put that to a separate area here on my desk so that I can remember that. But I have to say I don't have that so often that I find pages that belong together. But of course, if you have planned it exactly like like that yeah you can then just remember that by placing it here and now i have a lot of things left here um i have also some pages that are a little bit glossy this comes from a book i have just torn the page out and i like to include those glossy pages into my journals as well but i don't want to have them all in one place and i need a place for them where they match really well and where this glossiness is like an accent but not destroying something so i will put that here separately as well um, and then i also have some pages that are made out of other paper i mean this is like light and it's a special paper as well this comes from um, a curtain sample book i guess so the samples are 
already removed, but um, this this year gardinen that means curtains, and those special papers I will put here as well. This is, for example. Uh, this is also a book page, but this is not glossy, so it goes not to the glossy area there, but this is matte and it's a little bit more narrow, so it goes here. Um, I also have this. Why haven't I put it here yet? That goes there. And this is also um, the same thing with as with this page. This comes from a scrapbooking um paper pad this is also light and it is not matching the other categories so i put that here as well um the same with this one here that fits here as well then i have some transparent papers so this is also another kind of paper so let's make another category here this is the same like with the other scrapbooking paper. The same with this, I would say. This is also a little bit smaller. This I count as transparent or let's say translucent. Have, have I said transparent? I think that's not the right word. Of course, I mean translucent. Yeah, this is translucent and this is translucent as well, even if this is not the same color. <clears throat> And these are also a little bit thinner. So I'm taking this here because this is really, really thin. And it, it is not translucent, but it fits not so well to the other categories that I have. So this will go here as well because it has the same like sound and feeling and so on like the translucent papers have. And as you can see, I have some of these left. These would fit into this category because they are short and slim. But I also know that I have a little bit too much on the table here. We have talked about the width of the spine and we have measured 8.5 centimeters and we want to get close to 6 centimeters. That means I will have to remove some of my pages, put, put them back into my stash and use them for another journal. And to decide which papers that are, I like to do it like this, make categories and, th and then see what I have left over and decide if it's really important to have this in the journal. Yeah, I mean, here, as you can see, I have not done so much. I have only stamped that and uh, put this lace here because this paper is so flimsy. So perhaps we can take one of these because it's nice paper. Yeah, one of these here so that we have one. And then we could decide if we really need the rest because you can see here there has happened nearly nothing. Um, also with this book page here, I have done nothing yet because it's also relatively thin and I had just no idea what, what to do there rather than this stenciling and the stamping. So I can take that and I can get rid of it, put it back into my stash and use it for another project. The same with this and also this paper. This has driven me crazy, especially with the Grungy Journal. I will show you the paper from from the Grungy Journal. That was this one. I have crumbled that up and I have put some leftover paint here. And this this has driven me crazy because it's it's nice. It's a nice sound. But I thought, what is this? And suddenly I saw that it can't fit into the Grungy Journal anymore. And I decided to just leave it. Yeah, I will put that back into my stash and I will happy with my journal in the end. <laughs> And the same with this. I think this is perhaps better for making a collage or something because this is, I, I have no connection to this paper. It's really crazy. Even if this has this special um, writing here. Yeah, but that can happen. The same with this. Uh, these pages feel a little bit like a mixture out of toilet paper and uh, this uh, paper towel. <laughs> it's really crazy. Here's nearly nothing, so let's get rid of that as well. And here I made a really big mistake that's not so good. As you can see, um, I have put this tag spot here and then I have put this tag in. And that is not good. The, the page is so flimsy and this here is way too heavy for the page. And I really don't like that. So what I will do is I will take this out 
find another place for this tag. I will put that aside for the moment. And this as well, I've just put that in because I thought um, that looks nice in combination with the theme of the journal. And then I can um, still use the tuck spot, of course, by just cutting it here and gluing the whole thing um, to another page. Yeah, but using it like this would be not so sturdy for the journal. And that's just a like a technical thing, I would say. So then we have all of this that saves space in the journal. So I will put that back into my stash. Uh, where can I throw it for the moment? There. <laughs> and then we have to decide um, how many signatures we want to put into the journal. And as I told you before, you have different possibilities, of course. Um, the, um, if you want to decide how much space you want to leave in between of the single signatures. And depending on the thickness of your embellishments, you can decide that. Here in this, uh, in both of the journals, in the Grundy journal, that's also a fact. Um, we have embellishments that are relatively thick because we've used a lot of layers. That makes, of course, such a page relatively thick. It's, uh, of course, totally different than if you would only have a butterfly glued down here. And when I have such thick embellishments, I like to leave one centimeter in between of each signature um, because then you can later on open the journal way more easily um, you can write in it way better than if you would leave less than a centimeter. When I know that, I like to take a ruler um, and I like to visualize that a little bit. So when I have my six centimeters here, and that works with inches, of course, as well. Yeah. Um, so then here where the zero is, there is the place where the front cover will be later. Here where the six is, there will be my back cover later. And this is then the spine. And the signatures are standing in here like this. Meaning, if I want to leave one centimeter, the first signature would be here, where it's, it shows one centimeter. The second would be here. The third would be here. The fourth would be here. And the fifth would be here. And there where six is, there's the back cover. Meaning we would need five signatures if we want to put them regularly here into this spine area with one centimeter distance in between of each signature. So that means we need five signatures now. And <clears throat> I like to start with the easiest kind of paper, I would say. So let me just make a little like space here so that you can see that perhaps a little bit. So this is the category printed paper and we have the digital paper here. So I like to count this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's perfect. That means we can put two uh, printed pages into one signature. So I will not think about it at this moment, I will just take two, put them here, take the next two, put them here, take the next two, put them here, and so on, so that I have five um, areas here where I can now build up the signatures. So this is going to become signature one, signature two, signature three, signature four, signature five. Then I go on with the next category. Let's take those like really tiny pages first um, and let's count those as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, I guess. And here it's um, a little bit different because we have different thicknesses of the paper. We have scrapbooking paper, we have this flimsy paper. These are nearly all the same. I mean, the paper where I have printed them to is the same. Of course, they are a little bit different in the thickness because of the embellishments, but the, se the paper itself is always the same. And I like to try to 
um, vary that here a little bit as well. So let's have, for example, this thicker paper here. This is a book page that is good. That is something different. Um, this here is nearly the same like this. So let's perhaps put this here. I mean, the order of the signatures is, um, of course, not uh, not done yet. Yeah, you can always change that up a little bit um, later. So then let's take, for example, this for here. And I like to start with the more thicker paper so that I now know that I have something thicker on every signature here. And then let's go on with the more like flimsy papers. So let's put, for example, one of those here, one here, one here, and one here, and one here. Now we have two of those really tiny pages in each of the signatures. And I have three left over. This is relatively boring as well. We still have too much, meaning this is not allowed to play with us today. Um, this here is also, I mean, I have left it just a second ago. I know I said, let's leave it because we have this um, cool paper here, but now I have it left over. So I know I have too much. I have this left over. And no matter what I have said a second ago to myself or to you, I can still decide that I can take this for another project and throw it out now. This here. Yeah. What is that? Is that nice? I don't know. This is, of course, not finished yet. You can see um, the little ephemera through this paper here that are in this pocket here. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> I have this torn area here. And if I shall be honest to you, if I have this, something like this, and I wouldn't record a video, then I would definitely say, okay, let's save the time. Let's save the effort to fix those areas. Let's just throw it out. And when I have finished my creative process here and I will clean my desk, it will probably happen that I go ahead and just do something like this because this now is a really cool, cool uh, piece for a collage, isn't it? And I have this i can tear this as well and use the pocket but i don't have the trouble with this unfinished page yeah i don't want to stop my process of making this and of deciding which papers will go into which signature i don't want to stop myself so i will not think about those things that sounds a little bit weird um but <laughs> i like to do it like that so um yeah now we have this and I'm just realizing that I only have one of those glossy pages here. Normally I have more of this kind of paper, but we still have these that are flimsy and translucent or only uh, flimsy. So perhaps we can see those as like, let's call them special papers that have a special sound, a special for example, also could be uh, a special thing could also be a pattern that you have nowhere else in the journal. And I also have these that are a little bit more narrow, but have the same height like the other others. And these are one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we would like to put one into each signature, we would have one too much. So let's decide which one can go. Um, I really like this. So this will stay. So I will put that here. Uh, this here has to stay as well because I have realized that he here is a little ghost <laughs> in my gesso. I really like this page and I have something like a connection to this page. So this will stay as well. Mm, I really like the idea with the... Um, you know, color palette that we have cut down, but we have nothing else here on this paper. So let's put that aside for a moment and have that in mind. 
I really like this so that will stay and I really like the effect with this and this is also this translucent paper um, and I think for the clean journal that's really great to have that so let's have that here and I want to have this glossy page here I don't know why but yeah I think it's also some kind of a part of my style to have those kind of pages in my journals so I will put this here that means that this is leftover and I'm uh, also realizing that I have this leftover I've just ignored that <laughs> for some reason where I have put both of these pages into each other already so that I know that I want to um, have this order in one of the signatures but that doesn't matter let's take this as like a backup and let's put that together with this to the side for a moment because what I'm trying to say is when you have um, put the papers here and you think okay this is signature one signature two signature three and so on you will realize in a few minutes that you will need something like this to have a little bit of room for playing around and make this whole thing work. You will see in a second what I mean by that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> did you realize that I have missed a whole category oh my goodness what is happening here one two three four five signatures I'm so sorry so we have to put these here as well of course I was wondering why this is not so much uh, oh my goodness um, this was laying a little bit <laughs> far away so we have these that come from the scrapbooking uh, paper pads and that have this light color here so we have made this category a few minutes ago so let's see one here one here one here one here and the fifth one that were fifth uh, five uh, the fifth one goes there so now we can start <laughs> I'm so sorry so what I like to do then is take the first thing here so that uh, paper that shall become the first signature and then I like to have approximately three things in mind the first thing is I want to start with a page that is not too flimsy but also not too hard yeah not too stiff let's say so um, I will tell you in a second why so for example this one here is relatively stiff it feels a little bit stiff I don't know um, this for example is relatively flimsy I will not choose that I will tell you in a second why so I really like this page so perhaps we can start with that one but please do it like you like it yeah but um, in this step putting the signatures together for me there comes another aspect of junk journaling to the game because I want to have my books in the end sturdy I want that the new owner can work in them that they don't fall apart of course and because of that for me some things are really really important so this is not too flimsy this is sturdy and it's perfect for the first page of a signature and I really like this here so let's take this to start with then I like to open it like this and I like to see which page I want to have here as the next page I think this one would look great here um, then perhaps we can take another one that's a little bit bigger so perhaps like this and that's the second thing that I like to have in mind that I vary the sizes of my pages here a, li Ooh, a little bit so then let's perhaps here take a little bit smaller page again but this is is this a little bit boring perhaps let's take this and put this around here oh I don't like that I mean this journal shall stay really calm so perhaps this is not the not the baddest way to do it so let's let's leave it like that for a moment and let's take the smaller one here and the third thing that I like to think about is 
this middle page here. So this is the last page that I have for this signature and this goes into this middle. So when I open it like this, I have here the middle and here is the area where later on our thread for the binding will go through. That means that this um, here has to be really, really sturdy, of course. Uh, if you choose a paper that is really flimsy or too hard, too stiff for this middle page, I made the experience that that doesn't work so well. If the page is too flimsy, it can happen that you tear your holes that you poke here with the uh, with um, with pulling the thread, and that could look not so great. So the page has to be sturdy. But if it's, for example, a really stiff scrapbooking paper that you have in the middle here, it could happen that when you close that, that it closes not completely here, but that it stays open a little bit. And I don't like that. So um, when you have it like this, we have nearly the same thing for this outer page here especially when the paper is too flimsy i want to show you what i really don't like about that uh here so let's see if i can find that here for example this book page um i have never thought that this could be a problem but when i constructed the journal i haven't had this flower here i only had the book page the flower I had lay, uh, I have added later and I had this book page here and I thought it's sturdy enough and it's not too stiff and not too flimsy. Um, but now with this heavy embellishment, the page tends to do something like this. Yeah, and especially here in this slot, that's not so nice. It's really not so nice. And that's the reason why I like to choose something where I can be sure that that can't happen. This is so sturdy. When I do it like this, it, it can't happen that it moves and makes this hill here. Yeah. Um, so now we can go through this again and we can see if we like the order. Because what we are doing here now is, of course, deciding for the final order of those pages. So make sure that everything is, <laughs> you know, in the right direction, that, that nothing is upside down. Um, I mean, some people like things ups upside down and some things are meant to be upside down, but <laughs> make sure that um, you have everything where you want it. Then we can take that and put that aside for a moment and take the next one here. So let's do exactly the same thing here as well. And... What I also like to do is, um, here for example, you can see that this page would be good. It's not too flimsy and not too stiff. And here we also have something relatively thick. Also here with this button, this embellishment is relatively thick. And I will tell you the reason why I like to put those things as the outer page of my signature. It's such a simple reason and i don't know if you do that all the time or if that's new for you but for me when i found it out it was a totally game changer because look here for example this card is relatively thick you can't see that because this is in the camera it shows not up so well but this is relatively thick and if i would have um, for example a button here or a really thick embellishment made out of lace or something that is for example so thick like this put it here because when you i mean here or of course here yeah to the end or to the um, start of one signature because you have this space here and when you have something that is really thick here and you close the journal, it has the space to live there. And when you close that, you will not see that so extremely when you look to the journal from the outside because it's yeah like, like a room for an embellishment that is thicker with this space there. I hope that makes sense. That's also good if you want to... For example, include thicker booklets to your journals. Then you could also make a pocket or a belly band or however you store them in your journal and put them in here on the front or the back of such a signature. And it would have the room here of the centimeter to, to live in there and to make nearly 
no bulk. I say nearly because thick embellishments are always <laughs> bulk, of course, but I think you know what I mean. Mm. Oh, no. Mm. Oh, let's try it. <laughs> let's try to put this like so. Do I like that? Yeah, let's leave it. Let's leave it. I think it's good. So here, let's put perhaps this smaller one. And of course, now you can also take this and turn it around and fold it the other way around to see if you like that better or if you want to leave it like it was before. Um, So here, for example, we could try to do it this way around. I think I like that even better. And this one could go in here or we could also turn it around like this. And then we would have this in the middle. No, I, li I don't like that. I like this better. So let's see how it looks here. I think, yeah, I think I'm fine with that. So I will now go on with exactly the same method with the other signatures and put them together with exactly the same thoughts behind. So when I have finished that, I like to take this whole thing again and put it to my table like this. Again, hold it here. Don't press too much, but look at it from here. And when I do that, I can see here one thing very, very clearly. Um, that is not always the case. But here, can you see that this space here and this, this space here is way bigger than both of these here? That looks like something is irregular. And when I see that, I immediately know that I have to do something and that have that I have to check something and um, as you have seen we haven't paid so much attention to the single embellishments that we have on our pages in the signatures now we haven't paid so much attention to how many embellishments are here how many are here or may how many are here the only thing that we had have had in mind is this thing with the thicker things for the outer sides of the signatures. Yeah, but the other things we haven't paid attention to yet. So I like to do a little trick. I don't know if that is something that every junk journal is doing, but I have found that out for myself and I have found out that that is really helpful and I would like to share that with you now. I take my fingers like this. And I'm starting here at the first signature. And now I try to get a feeling for how thick the signature is by just going along the signature here like this for several times. Then I can feel, okay, it's this thickness. Yeah, I, I don't measure that. I don't say this is uh, 0.5 centimeters, but I get a feeling for how thick this is. I take my fingers again, move to the next signature and go over here. Oh, that's a little bit difficult because here is a butterfly. And I can feel here on the bottom, it's a little bit thicker. That's okay. And here, it's approximately the same thickness like this one is. Yeah. Then I go to the next one with exactly the same method. And I can feel this is way, way thicker than this and this is. That probably also makes this space here. I remember that this is thicker. Go to the next signature. Do exactly the same. This is also way thicker. Approximately the same thickness like this is. And the last one. Let's quickly compare that. It's a little bit thicker than both of these. But not as thick as these are. So that means I will take both of these out and see why they are <coughs> so thick. So let's see what is inside of this signature that makes it so extremely bulky. Uh, what could that be? I guess it's this button here. Can you see that this is a relatively thick uh, vintage button? 
and I end this thing as well. And I guess in combination with this, this makes the bulk. Here's a button included as well in this little embellishment. Yeah, and it's mainly, the thickness is mainly here. When I press here, it's okay, but here it's really thick. So perhaps we could think about a way to um, change something a little bit or to take a page out. That could also be something that we could consider. And that is also a reason why I can't tell you how many pages you shall put into one signature. It could happen that I have a signature where I have really bulky things and I take pages out so that I have, for example, here two pages less than in the other signatures. So that also not every signature has the same, the same amount of pages. Do you know what I mean? So um, there's no rule for that. But this is, yeah, this is a problem. Um, sometimes it's not so easy to solve those problems. I think I don't want to take something out completely. That's my problem here because I like every single of these pages really much. Let's see if I don't um, find a solution in the very beginning of this thinking process. I take the next one and I like to see what is going on here. Perhaps we can just uh, mix something here a little bit <laughs> when we can't take something out. Perhaps we can find another solution. So this, for example, here makes bulk, of course, as well. And it also looks not so nice here. So perhaps we can take this one out. This looks way more harmonious now. And I think here... One problem is this vellum that is really dimensional and this flower is also relatively thick. Mm. Yeah. But now, ooh, now it's way better than it was before. You can't see that so well, but I can feel it. And you can feel it, of course, as well when you do it with your own journal. And I can see that or feel that um, the bulk is mainly on the bottom. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's okay here, but on the bottom, it's a little bit thicker. That's of course, because um, most of the pockets are on the bottom and these uh, smaller pages are at the bottom at the moment as well. So let's take this smaller page and let's see if we can put that more to the top to have less bulk here and um, take the chance to use the space that we have on the top i think for this page that would be really great it looks good in combination with the rest that we have below there yeah and i think that's the only thing that we can do here if we don't want to take one out oh it's way better it's way better yeah yeah it's way way better okay so let's leave that like it is and let's think about this I mean what we also could do is we could do six signatures uh, instead of five then we would need um, seven centimeters of, of for the spine but I think that would be okay as well um, if we talk about the proportion of a journal then we can also do some tricks as you have seen with this this is DNA 5, but the spine is seven and a half centimeters. Yeah, so th that's also a possibility to say this is way too thick. Uh, I take something out, for example, this thick thing, and let's search for a page that we can use as the outer page because we've just removed that one. So let's, for example, do it like this. And let's take this one out as well. Then this is really okay, I would say. Let's put that back and let's see how we can make um, signature number seven. But before I do that, I mean, I have this left over now and we still have this that we had put aside a while ago. So 
I will take these back and I will do this trick with my fingers again to see if this is okay now. Um, when you look at this, then you can see the distance here is way more regular now than it was before. That's because the signatures are like more the same thickness than they were before. So let's check that again. This is still really thick when I do this trick with my finger. So let's take that out again. Yeah, this is now nearly the same. Let's see if we can take one page out here. Not, um, I mean, not totally out, but let's use that perhaps for signature number seven. Uh, for example, this where this fat flower is. Let's check if this still looks good. I think that's okay for me. Now this is compared to these really good. Yeah, so let's see if we can make a new signature out of this and out of this perhaps. This was a good page for the outer page, so that let's use that again. And as I told you before, I had both of these uh, that I have already put together because I liked this in combination with each other. So let's try if we can perhaps put that in here. That looks good. And perhaps we can then... Um, first take this smaller one, put that to the top because we know on the bottom it's already relatively bulky. And then let's take this for the middle. And here we go. I will leave this out. I will probably tear around that and glue that to one of the pages as an embellishment. But for now I will throw it away. So we've just decided that we will have seven signatures in one journal uh, in this journal i'm so sorry um, and um, it could also of course happen with your process of creating embellishments and pages that you in the end have so much that you can make even more signatures and you can decide i make two journals out of that yeah that happens all the time to me when I look at this and I think okay it's nice it would be a really really nice and thick journal but perhaps I'm not in the mood for a thick journal or perhaps I need two journals because I have to go to a birthday party and an Easter party and I need two journals as a gift yeah where's the problem I can take this apart and make two journals out of that do you know what I mean? Then you can decide if the, uh, is this too thin for me or do I want to have a really like slim, not slim, but, but um, you know, not so thick journal. You can still decide if you want to make two out of them or even three or depending on how much you have, of course. Um, and it can also happen that um, I tell you something now what I will do and that I change my mind when I stop the camera um, to explain that to you what I'm doing here is my real process yeah what you see in this series is the reality uh, everything would be nearly exactly the same even if I wouldn't record this as a video so um, that means I of course have to think about the things as well so um, I will definitely uh, think about this after finishing this video for a while because now um, we have to decide if we want to make a soft cover or a hard cover and that's also a reason why I do that in the very end when I have my signatures then I think about the cover normally I'm the type of liking a hard cover as you know I like to have something in my hand that feels like a book and with a hard cover that's way easier to reach but when I see this and I take my ruler again and now we have to think the whole thing through with seven centimeters spine and I put this here or it's, it's, it's so hard to show in the camera. I would not do that in reality like this. Lisa, do it like you would do it in reality. <laughs> I would put it to my table like this um, and now it's really hard for you to see in the camera. Um, you can see that this is really 
it's not flat yeah this is way higher than it is here and it moves a little bit into this direction when i uh have this here and imagine please that you have a hard cover and the cover is here then of course it would press the whole thing like so a little bit and this is the width of the spine then with a hard cover so that is here approximately eight centimeters that is one centimeter more than we have planned meaning it would probably happen that when you have um, seven centimeter spine and you would need eight that this would go like this and you would have a little triangle here with your pages um, meaning there are two ways uh, make a bigger spine go to eight centimeters with the spine now with um, six signatures that is yeah you know this proportional thing gets a little bit broken then um, if I have eight centimeter spine with six centimeter uh, sorry if I have eight centimeter spine with six signatures then would this would get in the end like this there would be no problem with this triangle but the spine proportionally is relatively big to my DNA 5 page size do you know what I mean and that is something where you have to think about really good if you have the same problem with this proportional feeling like I have another op um, another possibility would of course be to make a soft cover because a soft cover is of course way more flexible when we press this for example let me do it really extremely yeah i wouldn't bind it into the cover like i show it to you now but i want to make it extreme that you can uh, understand what i mean if i would have a spine that is here like this i wouldn't do that yeah again please don't do that don't don't um leave too less space when you have so much bulk in your journal that can't work um but let me show you that so extremely that you can understand it so if this was like this then i could make a soft cover and imagine the soft cover has a closure then i could without any problem press it like so and close it with the closure and the journal would be also not a rectangle when you look from here it's like a really weird oval shape but it would look not so massive in the end but that is a question of taste yeah when i have that and i think okay i have here my spine then i like to take a piece of fabric or like a tablecloth or something um, and put that around here and press this down a little bit to get a feeling for how that would look in the end and i guess that that is also one of the most difficult steps that you could do uh, that you could imagine with junk journaling but please don't be afraid of that yeah um i made so many mistakes with sewing signatures into a cover building the cover i have measured wrong things all the time <laughs> and it needs a little bit of experience and a little bit of thinking to get that like you want it i don't say like it has to be because there are no rules but it takes a while until you have it like you want it and i promise you when you practice that a little bit and make more journals with the time you will immediately know what you have to do in this step yeah i know that can be overwhelming and this is perhaps also a video that goes into this really really deep details and i try to consider as much as i can so that you can transfer that to your own journals and i'm hoping that you're not confused yeah so if you have any questions about that if anything is unclear please write a comment and i try my best to um clear that up and answer your questions so um i will tell you what i will do next uh next i will stop the camera and drink a coffee <laughs> but after that and that's i mean that was a joke yeah but um it's not a joke at all because taking a break 
and stepping a little bit back from the project can help really, really much to find the right solution. Um, but I want to tell you what I will do in the next videos. Um, I have put together the signatures for the Grungy Journal in exactly the same way, but in my German video. So I have already finished this here, as you can see. And I will do the following thing. I will think about what kind of cover I want to make for the Clean Journal and for the Grungy Journal. And you will see me constructing the cover for the Clean Journal in the English video that's coming next. And you will see me constructing the cover for the Grungy Journal in the German video. Yeah, because now making the cover, I can't do it that simultaneously like I have done everything else within this series. I will use um, similar methods. I will do it like simultaneously, but in two different videos. Do you know what I mean? Um, making a cover is really like one of the difficult, most difficult things about junk journaling. And I have to um, concentrate. Yeah. And I think I can't manage that to do that really simultaneously in one video. And it's also totally confusing for you to watch perhaps because this will perhaps need tiny variations of the same idea here as you can see this is not so thick this is way thicker so perhaps we have the same base for this cover and this cover but we will have different tiny variations to make both of these work i hope that makes sense um so that means the next video that you will see is about making the cover for the clean journal. And if you want to see the other one, of course, you can watch the German video or you can wait for the flip through of both of these journals. Uh, I also have one video uh, on my plan that will show you how to use a journal once it's finished. I want to show you um, how you can put things inside of the journal that have a totally different color or a totally different style than what we have here. Because I thought we have created a clean journal, we have created a grungy journal, but what if the person who wants to work in this journal wants to put totally different things in here or totally different things in here? What if someone has pink embellishments and wants to put them into this clean journal? Is that possible? I want to talk about that, <clears throat> excuse me, and I want to show you, um, yeah, a trick or an idea, a technique, how you, in, uh, how you can include those things into such a journal that has a specific style. Uh, yeah, that's that. And um, I also want to um, tell you that I have planned something very special for my channel because, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> for all of you who are still here, I mean, this video over was very long and I really appreciate the time that you are spending with watching my videos. So the, you get a little like bonus here in the end of the video <laughs> when you made it to here to this point. Um, I'm planning a very, very special thing, a special video here on my channel. That is something that I have never had before on my channel. And the reason, <laughs> I think you can guess the reason, um, the most of you have already read that on social media, um, that Tim Holtz has invited me to become a maker of his team. And I'm totally out of order at the moment because of that. So I think the most of you have heard about that. And I want to celebrate that a little bit with you because you are part of this as well. If you um, wouldn't have supported me so much in the past, then I wouldn't be what I am here now at the moment and the things that are happening at the moment are totally crazy for me my life is upside down at the moment my time schedule is totally out of control <laughs> but that's good because that's that brings me really really much motivation and I would say Tim has caught me in exactly the right moment in my life and I'm so looking forward to all the things that are happening now and I want to celebrate that with you and I'm planning that I'm doing my best to get that out um, as 
soon as it can go out, I need some help for, from other YouTube creators for that. So I have to organize some things. But I wanted to let you know that something is coming. Yeah, for you, for us. And yeah. <laughs> so I will take my coffee now. Thank you so much for your patience and for watching and for, for taking the time. I so appreciate that. And I appreciate each and everyone out there. I love you so much. I can't tell you that. So oh, um, please have very much fun with your own projects. And as I said, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. And hopefully we will see you the next time. Have a great day. Bye bye.